Hey everybody, how you doing? Teching here, and uh, I know this video was delayed a little bit, I apologize, although I don't apologize that much because it got delayed because the Bleach anime is coming back, that news broke, and that kind of took priority at the moment, but here we are today to round out the Straw Hats in One Piece, Google, Autocomplete, Part 3, Sun, Trace, um, okay, hold on, I think I know three in French, hold on, uh, un, do, Twa? Is it Twa? Is it part Twa? Alright, so today, we're gonna be taking a look at all of the men aboard the Straw Hat crew. We, of course, have Tony, Tony, Choppa, Sanji, Vinsmoke, Usopp, we don't know his last name, Brooke, also nameless in terms of last, and Frankie, which, by his given name, Cutty Flam. Alright, so we'll be tackling all of them today. I might do some other parts of this, because there's a lot of other One Piece characters, like the other Yonko and various Marines, that would be interesting to look at Google Autocomplete, but for right Right now, this is the third part, so let's let's dive right in. Let us start with Sanji. Sanji is a simp. Okay, already we're starting off with me doing extra research because I have no idea what that was. Okay, so don't worry though. A quick jaunt over to uh, Urban Dictionary cleared that up right quick. A simp is defined as a man that puts himself in a subservient, submissive position. Oh ho ho! This is going places. Under women in hopes of winning them over. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely so. Like I don't even need to finish the um, definition. I, I, that's immediately Sanji. But let's continue. Uh, without the female bringing anything to the table. Well, I mean, in terms of bringing anything to N Nami did slap Sanji that one time during Totland. Um, but in terms of bringing anything romantically to the table, I mean, there's subtext there, but nothing really extremely overt or anything like that. Um, and that could be just because, you know, Oda says, like, I'm not gonna romance the Straw Hats, so... I know I think a lot of people wanted to see, like, at the end of Totland, when Sanji was reunited with the crew, Nami was gonna run up to him and, like, you know, they were gonna kiss or something, and it'd be really romantic. I'm like, oh, he's back! They truly love each other. I mean, I would have been okay with that, but... Oda did say he's not going to romance the Straw Hats, but no, in terms of Sanji and that kind of behavioral pattern, there's another definition here. A man that puts too much value on a female for no reason. Are big boobs considered a reason here? <laughs> I don't know. I need to describe, like, like I need more of a, a sub-definition, but no. Yeah, Sanji is definitely the kind of character that's just going to run headlong into any woman that needs anything done from him. Um, that's, a, like, a beautiful woman in his eyes. He'll just throw himself at, at their feet. There was another definition on here that referenced uh, chivalry specifically. Um, chivalry is probably a dying art in, in many people's minds mind, but it's definitely not in Sanji's. So, old-fashioned or sim- I don't know how you want to describe him, but yeah, he will. If there's a beautiful woman nearby, he'll he'll do the, uh, the Brock angle from Pokemon and basically just be completely submissive and do pretty much whatever they command of him. So, I guess by that definition, yes, yeah, Sanji is in fact a, a simp there. Um, why Sanji is only wanted alive. Well, he's not wanted alive anymore. That actually got changed over in the last arc and at the end of Totland. He was only wanted alive because his family, the Vinsmoke family, the German Double Six, um, actually had a lot of sway in this particular matter uh, because they were trying to become part of the Reverie and the world government and after Judge, the, uh, the patriarch of the family, figured out that Sanji was still alive, he thought, oh, I could use Sanji as a pawn in order to marry one of Big Mom's children pudding and so that'll get our power even further and so he needed Sanji but he had to make sure that um he wasn't dead when he arrived because that kind of you, know, you can't marry a dead person well I don't know how it works in every country in the world but uh, you know ostensibly you can't marry a dead person okay so he had to make sure that if Sanji was captured he was captured only alive so that was the reason why his wanted poster only said alive and it was the only instance I think in the entire One Piece manga in fact I know in the entire One Piece manga where it said only alive on the wanted poster it's something kind of interesting honestly because the entire series we always see bounties and we always see wanted posters like dead or alive dead or alive dead or alive so I'm glad Oda twisted it up that one instance it's like can it be only alive and can it be only dead well 
I don't know if it would be only dead. I mean, maybe if you're talking about somebody that's like super, super, super dangerous. Uh, but even when we get to Kaido, who is a Yonko, who is like one of the strongest creatures in the entire world, um, his wanted poster, I believe, still does says dead or alive. So it's like, yeah, but maybe if Rox comes back and Rox is like such a massive threat to the world, um, or if Blackbeard gets to the level where Rox was at, maybe the Marines will just be like, screw it, we don't want him alive. Just, just, we just want him dead. Just get, just get rid of him. We don't want to deal with him anymore. Okay. Maybe something like that. Next one. Sanji is weak. Well, that depends if you're a fan of Zoro or if you're a fan of Sanji. If you're a fan of Zoro, you're like, yeah, man, I'm sorry. Sanji ain't nowhere near Zoro. Uh, but if you get to Sanji, be like, I don't know, man. I think Sanji's a lot stronger. Sanji is a straight up flipping superhero, Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, Tokusatsu character right now. So he definitely got a strength buff. You got to give Sanji that much. I can't wait to see what he's really going to pull off in this war coming up. But I would not consider Sanji weak. A lot of these questions, now that I'm realizing it, are, are these straw hats? That's weak. They're the main cast of the entire series. They're definitely, um, there's a power scale here. Luffy's definitely stronger than Usopp. Well, I mean, Robin is definitely stronger than Shot. Well, you know what I mean? There's, there's stronger members, but they're all part of the main cast. They all have their strengths and they can deal with each other. They, they can handle themselves in a fight. Sanji is a prince theory. So this was the one that, uh, and I even think I made a video about this a long, long, long time ago. I might have even made a video about this like before I was even doing One Piece reviews regularly or One Piece content on the channel. But yeah, um, after we found out what Sanji's real name was, you know, Sanji Vinsmoke at, you know, at the end of the Zoark, and we're like, whoa. And so a lot of people thought that he was going to be ro royalty. He kind of is and he kind of isn't. So the Vinsmoke family uh, and the Germa Double Six, they're sort of like, they were tentatively considered to be members of the world government. They're royalty kind of in their own way because they ruled over the North Blue for 66 days, a really long time ago. And then they were immediately dethroned. And then Judge tries to live up to his ancestors by, you know, regaining that status that they had as rulers of the North. That's like the ultimate goal of the Vinsmokes and the Germa, right? So... You know, basically, you know, a very, very long time ago, Sanji's distant ancestors were royalty. So, but then they were removed from royalty, but they're still part of a kingdom. So, technically, Sanji is a prince, but not in the eyes of the world government. The world government would not consider him royalty or anything like that, probably. They would just consider them, you know, outlaws, and, and that's the case there. Not really pirates, but outlaws. So, um, but I saw a lot of theories, one of which was actually with the, um, one of the members of the Gorosei, the youngest member of the Gorosei, who I think I called Sanji's uncle, because he does kind of resemble, like, an older Sanji or, like, someone, like, a member of his family. Um, people were th throwing out the idea that maybe Sanji is that dude's, you know, like, son or, you know, one of his, uh, one of his uh, family or something, like, distant cousins or something. Thing, right so yeah didn't turn out to be the case but yeah it, technically speaking in a certain sense he is a prince yes um why sanji is only alive uh well we already we already answered that one sanji is naruto fan fiction okay so i don't know about the fan fiction but sanji's original name was intended to be naruto um this was really early on in the one piece manga and also going along at the same time here was the early stages of the naruto manga written by uh, kishimoto kishimoto and oda are really good friends and kind of like manga rivals throughout the years there because their mangas were running concurrently for a very very long time naruto and one piece very popular series um, and yeah, I, I have read in an interview that Oda originally intended Sanji's name to be revealed as Naruto at the, at the Baratie arc. However, because Kishimoto's series was Naruto and that was kind of getting a lot of traction, uh, he decided to change it to Sanji. Um, it's interesting now knowing where we were going with the Vinsmoke family and all the different naming schemes like Ichiji, Niji, Sanji, Yonji, Reiju, which means Zero, uh, Judgy. Um, it's interesting if his name would have been Naruto that naming scheme would not have worked at all. I mean, you could have still had the family there, but you could have actually had Sanji as the outcast with a different name. It would go like Judgy, Reiju, uh, Ichiji, Niji, Naruto, and then Yonji. So it would have still, I think, fit because Sanji's already an outcast of the family to begin with. But yeah, Sanji comes down to like the third, you know, because San and then boom, there you go. Um, but yeah, that was the that was the original intention. And Sanji is royalty theory already addressed that. Sanji is better than Zoro. Well, once again, that depends on which camp you're into. I'll be straight up though. Uh, early One Piece, Sanji was my favorite character. When Frankie showed up, he kind of took the he took the cola at that point. But early One Piece, even in during the Four Kids arc where they gave him the.
really dopey Brooklyn accent. He's like, Nami, I made you a cake, you know? Like, um, and they gave him all those stupid names, like, this is a ham sandwich roundhouse kick, you know? Like, uh, and just, just stupid stuff involved with Sanji's character that the four kids staff decided to give him. But I still liked his design. I like, like, even the lollipop thing, because even when I was a kid, I could kind of tell, like, it's supposed to be a cigarette. Um, he's like, man, Sanji's cool. But then, of course, we get to the Funimation, we get the original, and like, okay, Sanji is actually properly cool. Um, so if I was gonna pick, like, my two favorite Straw Hats, Frankie's number one, uh, Sanji's definitely up there. Robin is also included high up there as well. I don't know if it would go Sanji, Robin, I mean, Frankie, Robin, Sanji, or Frankie, Sanji, Robin. Um, but, you know, I, I like those three Straw Hats are probably my favorite overall. Sanji is a noble address that already and Sanji is French well a lot of his attack names are in French I will not attempt to name any of them right now uh, because I will probably fail horribly although there's one I can kind of confidently say it's flamba shot also his uh, diable jambe this is the foot of the devil diable jambe although I don't know if it's diable jambe in, in Japanese I believe they say jambe in the English version, which is, it, it's an English voice actor saying French. I think he pronounced it more like Diable Jamb or something like that. Um, but I really love the name of that technique, you know. So French, very elegant. It, it works for Sanji's character, right? Okay. So that, that's Sanji. Moving on now to One Piece Chopper questions. One Piece Chopper Forms. Ah, well, that depends on which series, side of the series you're talking about here. In the uh, pre-time skip, One Piece Chopper has his three main forms. He's got his Walk Point, which is his original reindeer form. That's what he was born as. He's got his hybrid form, his Brain Point, which is a tiny little chibi that's loved by all. And many plushies and merch are made out of. And then we have his Human Point, which is, you know, his human guys. Although it's not more, it's more like a Neanderthal, if anything. Kind of like a caveman, yeti, abominable snowman design. That's actually the source of a lot of debate even then. Like, how come, like, when Kaku transforms into a fully realized giraffe, he looks like a giraffe. He doesn't look like some weird human-giraffe hybrid. His full giraffe form is a straight-up giraffe. But whenever Chopper goes into his fully realized human form, he has a lot more hair, and he just, you know, his he doesn't look like a normal human. He's mistaken for a Yeti a lot. So a lot of people think that maybe he has, like, an ancient version of the Hito Hito, like a more primitive version, um, you know, something like that. But I'm not really sure if that's ever going to be addressed. But those are his three main forms. But, of course, Chopper is a master doctor and chemist, and so he developed the Rumble Ball. And so he pops one of those suckers in, and he gets some extra forms. Um, Pre-time skip, he had arm points, jump point, which was my favorite. I'm really sad they took that away. Horn point, which we got to see during Alabasta, and guard point, which creates all of his fur to block attacks. Um, and then post time skip, he traded out arm point for his kung fu point, it seems. His horn point got a redesign. Uh, his, his human point is different as well. Or walk, not walk point. Yeah, his walk point just got older because he's just his normal, like he just grows up like a regular reindeer, so he got a lot larger there, so someone can actually walk, I mean, uh, ride on top of him. That sounded wrong. Uh, brain point stays the same pretty much. But yeah, human point gets a lot more muscular and he gets like ruffles with his hair now. So he even looks less like a human. Um, and uh, his other new form that he got uh, was he basically traded out jump point for monster point. So monster point pre-time skip was a form that he could only achieve while uh, eating three rumble balls pre-time skip. He couldn't control it at all. It was just a rampaging monster. Post-time skip though, he can go into that form and control it for a set amount of time. He needs to only take one rumble ball to go into his monster point. He can go in that form for... About three minutes, however, afterwards he is still severely uh, immobilized. He can't move very often, so he can control it, but it's still not something he should just do whenever. But yeah, that's, that's Chopper's points, his forms. One Piece Chopper Plush. Uh, there are several, but uh, this is my favorite. A fan gave this to me a while ago. It's a Law cosplay Chopper, and this is my favorite plushie. Hi, everybody, I'm Law. Room. I kind of honestly want to see Chopper cosplay like this, especially with that scene where we had um, Chopper, he was all immobilized after Frankie was in his body, and he's like, okay, who's the, like, Law's like, who's the doctor on your crew? And like, oh yeah, that's Chopper. And they just take Chopper and just tie him to Law's hat, and Law's just like, Ugh. So I would love, you know, Chopper to be like, I really like you, Traffy, you're a cool dude. And so he dresses up like Law one day and just walks out of the sunny, and Law sees him, and Law's like, 
uh, but on the inside, Law's like, oh my god, that's so cute, you know? And then you get Law and Chopper hanging out together, you know, like the two doctors, that'd be really cool. So that that's my favorite, uh, that's my favorite Chopper plushie. One Piece Chopper Age. Uh, 15 before the time skip, 17 after. He's uh, actually the youngest member of the Straw Hat crew. One Piece Chopper Hat. Yup. One Piece Chopper Figure. Uh, once again, there are several. He's a marketing darling. We've already addressed this, but I am a fan of the pop figurines by Funko, uh, or the Funko by Pop, whichever name of the company is. So, uh, I'm gonna go with, uh, my Funko Pop Chopper figurine. One Piece Chopper Bounty. Um, okay, so it is currently 100 berries, the lowest bounty, um... I guess technically not the lowest we've seen in the entire manga, because remember at the very uh, beginning of Blackbeard's career, he had a zero bounty. He became a warlord with a zero bounty. So there are technically lower bounties, which are no bounties. Um, but yeah, Choppers has the lowest in terms of that. My, the, the funniest thing I did about that is I did a Barry video once where I analyzed the currency of One Piece and basically puzzled it out because... Berries are essentially just like a one-to-one -one ratio for Japanese yen because Oda just wanted to keep it really simple So Japanese yen is something obviously the Japanese audience would understand so berries is essentially like that So we puzzled it out and a hundred berries is like equivalent to like 90 cents You know in America and I used to work at a dollar store where things was like everything was really discounted with like a dollar or less and you could not buy most of the things in that store for 90 cents, but something you could buy for 89 cents was a chocolate bar, like a Hershey chocolate bar. So we figured it out that Chopper's Bounty will buy you exactly one chocolate bar. That's how much Chopper is worth. Uh, you know, real world conversion. The reason he has such a low bounty, this is something I like to call the Chopper Paradox. The Chopper Bounty Paradox. Pay attention to this, okay? It's either the Marines do not know that the monster point form is Chopper because they've seen the monster point before. Sentomaru has seen the monster point before. Monster point Chopper through Kumadori rampaged around freaking Eni's lobby. The monster point is definitely confirmed to exist by the Marines. So either the Marines don't know that that's Chopper. I mean, you can't tell with the hat and the nose. So therefore, the Monster Point should really honestly have a completely separate bounty. Like, Chopper's bounty could be 100, but there should be another bounty that's like, you know, giant monster that also just happens to be on the Straw Hat crew, you know, 300 million or something. So that's one side of the paradox. And the other side of the paradox is if the Marines are not that stupid and they do know that the monster point is a version of chopper's devil fruit then why isn't chopper's bounty larger the only reason the only explanation i've gotten for this is that the marines don't know the name of the monster point so that's why there's no bounty but you could still issue a poster and just be like you know giant monster you know <laughs> like giant monster that also happens to be on the crew he's worth a lot of money um but it seems like the general consensus I asked around, like, what would Chopper's bounty be if it was legit? Like, if they actually took into, if it wasn't a joke, if they took into account all of his abilities and all of his powers and Monster Point and everything like that, what would Chopper's bounty be that would be fair? And I asked my fans, and I think the general consensus came down to, like, anywhere between 100 million and 300 million. So somewhere in between, like, Frankie and, like, you know, uh, upwards of, like, Sanji. I would probably put... Chopper comfortably somewhere around the, um, you know, probably comfortably in the hundred million spot, maybe. Uh, but if you can factor in Monster Point and his control over that, maybe even higher into like the 200 million range there, um, because he is kind of a beast in that form, right? So, I mean, Chopper's bounty should definitely be higher, but it's more of a joke, it's a gag on Oda's part. One Piece Chopper arc. Um, so the Drum Island arc is his introductory arc. Uh, the, some of the Straw Hats have had multiple arcs, like Sanji, of course, had the Baratie arc where he was introduced. Then he had the Totland arc. Uh, you know, Nami had, you know, her introduction arc at Orange Town, but also had the Arlong Park arc. Um, and even some stuff tied back in eventually to Fishman Island and Sabaody because the Fishmen were a major role there for Nami as well. Um, kind of like more important for her. Um, but yeah, so Chopper has not had another arc that's like really focused on him directly. Uh, but that's not to say it might not happen in the future. So, yeah. 
One Piece Chopper voice actor. Uh, he's actually had two, if you can believe it. For most of the anime, he's voiced by Ikue Otani, uh, but there were a few episodes of the anime, as well as one of the movies, I think it was Movie 7, you know, the one where Nami and Robin's boobs are just gynaxing all over the place. Um, you know, that's how I know it. I mean, it's the Mechanical Island Adventure or some bullcrap, but it's the one where Nami and Robin's boobs are bouncing all over the place. He was actually voiced by Kazue uh, Ikura. And then there's Brina Palencia, sorry if I'm mispronouncing anybody's name here, that voices uh, him during the Funimation dub. And then, of course, I have to mention in the four kids where he's voiced by lisa ortiz so um there you go yeah choppers voice actors one piece chopper uh gif there's a lot of them out there but my personal favorite is this adorable one where chopper is playing with a tiny little toy uh van that's 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 just absolutely adorable i don't even know what it's from i just know it's adorable and then finally one piece chopper movie this <laughs> will surprise you Chopper, as I said, marketing darling, he's had two movies focused on him. Two. The third One Piece movie, One Piece and Chopper and the, the Island of Strange Animals, and then there's the ninth movie, which is a retelling of the Drum Island arc, One, One Piece episode of Chopper plus, you know, Adventure on Drum Island or something. So he's had two movies where he is like the main character, and Zoro, though, has only had one movie where he was focused on, and that's like the Sacred Holy Sword. Um, yeah, other than that, most of the most of the most recent One Piece movies, like Film Gold and Stampede and everything, focus on the Straw Hats as an entire crew, or like Luffy specifically. Um, you know, in, in, in Film Gold, we had a lot from Nami and her backstory, uh, you know, but yeah, it, it seems like Chopper, he, he of course, you gotta focus on him because he sells the most merch. So yeah, he's actually had two movies focused on him. Okay, moving right along to Usopp-related questions. That's right, we are answering questions about God himself in this video. All right, starting off, Usopp is black. And this was something that I even referenced in the first episode of the autocomplete, and it's even in the second question as well. Usopp is African. Yes, um, Oda did say that, you know, well, okay, he gave countries of origin for all of the straw hats, like Sanji would be from France, Zoro would be from Japan, Robin would have been from Russia. Usopp was the only one he did not give a country of origin. He just said Usopp would be from Africa. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of countries in Africa. It is he just like generically said, yeah, he's just from the continent of Africa, so he could be from anywhere in Africa, I guess. Um, but yeah, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of the fandom consider Usopp to be a black character. Uh, last month was uh, February Black History Month. I saw a lot of stuff on social media where, you know, it was like, hey, let's take a moment to look at all the badass, you know, black characters in anime here. And here's like all the Raikage and Killer B from Naruto. Here's Yoroichi Shihoin from Bleach. And I also saw Usopp included on a lot of those lists as well. So I would consider Usopp a black character. And with that Netflix adaptation coming out, I even said in the first uh, in the first episode of this, I'm like, that would actually be really cool to take those countries of origin to have like a diverse cast. You know, you would have like a Brazilian actor playing Luffy, a French actor, or at least somebody that could like speak French play Sanji. Um, well, Brooks probably, Brooks not going to be involved in season one of Netflix. Although I, I did want to say, although, um, you know, he's from Austria. Brooke is from Austria and I wasn't really sure of why he was from Austria and a lot of my fans from Austria did specify well that's probably the reason is because a lot of famous uh, musical composers came from Austria like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's probably the most famous one I knew about Mozart I didn't know he came from Austria so I'm sorry uh, but thanks to everybody I learned something that day I'm like why Austria I'm like because it's like a country very much rooted in like music and famous composers I'm like oh okay that makes sense I learned something but yeah so Usopp is considered by many to be a black character so I could see him being played by a black actor I think that would work really well in the Netflix adaptation to have like a cast in that in that way like Nami is Swedish you know Robin is Russian I think that could make that work um Usopp is the best character well obviously yes why would you even ask that question that should be apparent right from the get-go right I mean the first time you see Usopp in the story you know right away you don't mess with this guy this guy is gonna be the supreme badass right Usopp is worthless get out <laughs> I'm not joking Whoever commented that, just get out. <laughs> I'm going to continue. I'm just going to skip over that question. I'm going to pretend that never happened, okay? Usopp is a god. Yes, absolutely. So in the Dressrosa arc, he was the one that saved everybody from uh, the Hobby Hobby no Me spell with his mystical, magical face powers, uh, scared the crap out of Sugar, made her pass out flat, 
right in front of him and has saved the country, really. I mean, not really. I mean, immediately, because we had the birdcage and everything immediately after, but that is the status that ascended Usopp into godhood, and he will be remaining in that place for, for all time. At the end of the story, when Usopp dies, the mighty Valkyries will ascend and they carry him into the next world where he will be supreme as, like, he will take over the position as, like, Odin the Allfather, okay? That is that is Usopp's, you know, um, you know uh, fate at the end of the story. Usopp is a D. Well, you know, we do not know his last name nor his middle initials, so if it did find out he was a D, I don't think there's any person in the One Piece fandom that would not be okay with that. That's like, Usopp is a D. Like, we knew it all along, right? So, yes, absolutely. Usopp is Soge King Theory. Is that another one of mine? Is that it? Because we had the Kaido is a duck. That's the whole reason I started doing this. Because you Google search Kaido is and it came up Kaido is a duck. I'm like, that's because of me. I did that. I don't want to take credit, you know, but I did make that vid. That was another April Fool's video I did the two years ago. I think 2018 was that April Fool's vid where I'm like, Usopp is Soge King Theory, which I don't know. The jury is still out on there. But is that another one of mine? That's, that's amazing if that is. I'm permeating um, the One Piece Googles. In more ways than I ever knew. And then finally, Usopp is the funniest. Um, he, you know what? It's great about Usopp is that there's a lot of humor in One Piece. And there's a lot of humor in the Straw Hats. You know, like, there's humor with Sanji. There's humor with Brooks. Skull joke! yo There's a lot of humor in One Piece. But Usopp is, like, the comic relief character. Yeah, sure. But he's also, like, badass and involved. He's not just comic relief for the sake of being, Hey, guys, I'm funny! And then that's it. Um, he's really strong, he's learning observation hockey, he's participated in the crew, he's had a lot of serious moments throughout the story, like his battle between him and Luffy over the Mary. Um, so Usopp is really, I think, this perfect blend of a comic relief character, but also someone you can relate to, and someone that is actually badass when the chips are down, and he'll actually stand up for his friends. And that's Usopp's character, really, and it's amazing, it's an amazing thing that Oda managed to work out with him, so yeah. But those, those are the Usopp-related questions. One Piece Frankie questions. Gotta let out a super just for that. All right. So, starting off strong, we got One Piece Frankie age. Frankie is the super age of 36 right now. He was 34 pre-time skip. Um, before Jean Bay joined, he was the second oldest straw hat. It went Brooke at age 90. Pretty sure Brooke is cemented as being the oldest straw hat. I don't think we're going to get any straw hats older than Brooke. Uh, but then it was Frankie as number two, and he's in his mid-30s. But now that Jean Bay is sort of like Schrodinger's straw hat, kind of like in and out, uh, he's in his mid-40s. So it'd be going uh, Brooke, Jean Bay, and then Frankie. One Piece Frankie figure. Um, Frankie is a cyborg, so that means he's basically a Megazord, which means there's a lot of merchandise and figurines and, like, action figures. Here's, here's Super Frankie action figure with Kung Fu grip and, you know, little, little miniature rockets you could pop off that probably does exist somewhere out there. I do have a figure of the Iron Pirate Frankie Shogun. I don't use it in a lot of videos because it kind of falls apart really easy. You gotta, like, assemble it, but it is really cool and I really do love it. One Piece Frankie voice actor. <sighs> Patrick Sates for Funimation, absolutely amazing voice, and in the Japanese, it's Kazuki Yao! Ow! Yeah, that's, oh, I almost got a paper cut there. One Piece, Frankie Family. Uh, the Frankie Family was Frankie's little mafia group, his underground group that he worked with um, while at Water 7. Uh, they're actually pretty nice guys, uh, and now they're kind of helping out the um, shipwrights to build. They built the new sea train, the Puffing Ice, you know, the successor to the Puffing Tom. Uh, so they're all working together there. I think uh, Zange or Zombe was one of the uh, members there. It started with a Z. And uh, yeah, then you have the Square Sisters, uh, 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 Mozu and Kiwi. Uh, so they were all members of Frankie's little like rough and ragtag like gangster group that existed in, in Water 7, right? Um, they were like ship dismantlers. One Piece, when does Frankie join the crew? When Robin grabs him by his balls. <laughs> that is the moment when Frankie knew he was a straw hat. But if you want to be technical, chapter 437 is when he declares like, I am Frankie, I'll be your shipwright. Okay. One Piece Wiki Frankie, that's just the wiki page. One Piece Frankie, super! You have to say super whenever you read that. One Piece Frankie X Reader, I don't know what that is. Oh, wait, is that the thing? I There was a thing that they did during that One Piece X Kyoto thing where you had to put on like special goggles and there was like a one, there was like a Frankie like QR code scanner because he's a cyborg. 
that might be referring to that. I'm pretty sure. Because, yeah, that, that was, like, the One Piece X Kyoto thing. And then there was these little things that you would put on, like, Frankie readers that, like, would scan, like, QR codes like you're a cyborg. So maybe they're, they're like, collectible, you know, items right now and people would be looking to buy them. There was also, like, like little brook like talismans you could get like little charms with brooks face on them at like a temple in japan and if anybody has any of those right now then congratulations those things are like a collectible item because that's like one piece x kyoto and that's like the 20th anniversary of the manga they're probably not going to do another thing like that for a while um and so if you manage to get one of the one piece brook like charms good on you that's that's really good stuff there uh but yeah there was some other stuff they handed out for that special event that's probably what that's referring to one piece general frankie well, you gotta Google Frankie in general, like, all the time, right? But yeah, General Frankie is the name of his Megazord. One Piece Frankie birthday. Come on now. Do I even need to say it? All of us true Frankie freaks know Frankie's official birthday is... Say it with me. Three, two, March 9th! Yes, we actually just passed it up a little while ago. Yep, March 9th. All right. So moving on here, we got Brooke questions. All right. And maybe if we have time, Jinbei. Maybe. I mean, this is already a long video, but all right. One Piece Brook questions. One Piece Brook voice actor. So in Japanese, it's Cho. Just Cho. That's the name that the uh, the person just chooses to go by in the industry. It's Cho. Uh, does an amazing job with Brook, especially with the laugh. Yo! Because that takes skill there. Also, impeccable singing voice, I must say. And then in the Funimation dub, it is Ian Sinclair. I love Ian's portrayal of Brooke. I think he does a fantastic job at it. Love it. Love the laugh. Love the jokes. He does. He nails it, man. One Piece Brooke Funko Pop. This was actually... I think I know why this is why this is uh, more on Google rather than like One Piece Frankie Pop or One Piece Sanji Pop. Um, it's because Brooks was a special like GameStop exclusive. Maybe not GameStop, but it was like a hot topic. It might have been hot topic actually. Like an extra exclusive. So like Sanji and Robin and Usopp I think were all released together and then Doflamingos was released as well. I've has his, I have his up there. But then Brooks was not available in that set. You had to get him through a special means. I actually don't know if Brooks... I haven't looked it up in forever, but Brooks might be a little bit you know more expensive to get because he was not part of the regular set he was more of an exclusive but um i actually ended up getting two brook figurines this is the one i purchased and there was another one my fan actually sent me that i have still in the box there so yes i do love my brook pop one piece brook devil fruit he has the power of the yomi yomi no mi or the revive revive fruit this is what it looks like it looks like a skull not something it would look like you would want to put in your body when you see a like a fruit shaped vaguely like a skull with like or like cow udders but um yes brook found it and he ate it and he had the power to come back from death uh which is something also once again you're not really sure how it works but give it a go i've made a few videos on the yomi yomi no mi over the years one piece brook height Okay, so somehow, and don't ask me how, actually go check out the video where I was talking about Brooke's body, because it's very, very weird. Brooke actually grew over the time skip. As a skeleton. Yeah, you don't, maybe he just drank a lot of milk and he gained some extra calcium. I don't know. Uh, but he was like eight and like eight feet by eight and a half inches, eight feet by eight. I'm, I'm talking about him like he's a room right now. He's like a dimension. He's like eight feet, eight and a half inches before the time skip. And he's like nine feet, one inch after the time skip. So, yeah, that, like, the centimeters, you can convert that back. But, um, yeah, he's a tall dude. He's he's one of the taller members of the Straw Hats. In fact, I think he is, in fact, the, the tallest member of the Straw Hats. Uh, Frankie, I don't I don't think Frankie has him beat even after, because, like, Frankie got a lot more tanky. He got a lot more, like, girth over the time skip. I don't think he got necessarily that taller. Brooke, I think, is the tallest member of the Straw Hats. One Piece Brook song. Uh, well, of course, I mean, Brook is the rock and skeletal musician of the Straw Hat crew. He's got to have some rock and tunes, right? So he's got um, Bone to be Wild. That's his hit single that really rocketed him as into status as the Soul King. Bone to be Wild! Uh, we also have New World. I have all of these songs, by the way, on my Android, so to listen to while I'm out, like, running, of course. Uh, for the New World! And at the end of that song, he just goes into, like, Oh, yeah, that's how you yell! Yeah, he just goes doing that kind of stuff there. Um, in Strong World, at least in the English dub, I don't know if this was in the Japanese, but in the English dub, he had the Crowley Davidson, Crowley Davidson song. Bink Saki, of course, can't forget, like, you know, Bink to Sake wa, you know, so Bink Saki, of course, that's a big one. Uh, that's the song he wants to bring back to Laboon. And of course, he has uh, Going to See Master Nekamamushi. That's the song he sang it. So I am eagerly anticipating the drop of the Soul King's next album. The next TD, I am pumped for it, right? All right. One Piece uh, Brook figure. Here you go. 
One Piece Brook age. Uh, he is 90 post time skip, 88 pre time skip. He died when he was 38, though. So, yeah, he's spent more time as a skeleton than as a flesh and blood human. Next question One Piece Brook human. Uh, if you just want to know what he looked like when he was human, here you go. It's no mystery. This is what he looked like when he still had flesh on his bones. Yo ho ho ho. And then One Piece Brook laugh. Well, it's yo ho 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 because of Bing Sake. Yo ho ho ho. Yo ho ho ho. Yo ho ho ho. Yo ho ho ho. Uh, but it's also the typical pirate laugh, you know, yo ho ho, me hearties, you know, that that kind of stuff. So that's Brooks' laugh. All right. Should we do Gene Bay? This is already a long video. <laughs> Should we do Gene Bay? Okay. Tell you what, I am a kind individual. Gene Bay is dead. Well, you see, the thing about.